Hello, this is my very creatively named Yellows Dialog Editor version 0.5.0. .0. It is an external tool that I created for the custom NPCs mod to help make creating and visualizing dialogues a whole lot easier. It is made 100% in the Godot engine because I'm a self-taught programmer with no formal training. It'll be 100% open source so you can come in and critique my code base, disparage me, make me feel bad, or suggest bug reports and changes and the likes. Uh, I've been working on it for about a year now and I'm finally ready to showcase it, get some feedback and criticism, hopefully make it better, and yeah. So let's get into how it works. On the right we have our recently opened categories, but you're not going to have that. So we have to go onto the left and hit open environments. We need to open a Minecraft world folder or the custom NPCs folder in that world folder. So I'm going to go to new world, custom NPCs, select this folder. So now we've been dropped into the actual editor itself. It's blank right now. On the right, we have the information panel, which is also blank. So I'm going to go ahead and hide it. Hover over to the left, to open the category panel. You can see we already have the villager category. That's the default category that's created by custom NPCs automatically. I'm going to go ahead and create a new category. I'm going to call this one uh, the editor video. Now that I've hit editor and created the category, I have this graph here. I can hold middle click to drag around or I can hold space and left click to drag around. Go ahead and add a dialog node. And here is our first dialog node. Right here is the title. I always name my first one greetings. This is the dialog title. This is not what the player sees. Here is the dialog text. I'm going to write, hey, what's your name? Click the plus button to add a new response. This is the player response option. By the way, holding shift and zooming, scrolling will let you zoom in. You can also hit control and press plus or minus. So I'm going to go ahead and write, my name is player. Click the plus button to add another dialog node and we'll say that's a cool name. So let's save it. Now that I've saved it, if I open this up into the file manager, there's a new file here, the editor video All it is is a text file that holds the information for all the nodes and connections and stuff. This is just so the editor can load the dialogue tree. This will not show up in custom NPCs. To make it show up in custom NPCs, we need to hit the export button. So now if I open up this world, now all I need to do is type the command nopes dialogue reload. Go on to this guy, global dialogues. Here's our new category with our two new dialogues. I'm going to put this on to him. Hey, what's your name? My name is player. You can see I mistyped that, but that's not the point. Let me go ahead and just fix that. There we go. My name is yellow 768. So let me go ahead and add another response option. You can select the dialogue node and click control R to add a response option going to select it and type I don't want to tell you click control R to add a dialogue node you can see that it's automatically connected and it automatically took the name of the uh, response node it came from and he'll just say oh okay I can't type okay control s save export reload the dialogues and there it is I don't want to tell you now before I look at that response, I want to add another one. Let's do this. I'm going to move the dialogue node down a little bit. I'm going to say, I changed my mind. It's player. Control R. Now I need this dialogue to show up after we've read this one. So I'm going to select the dialogue node. Open up the information panel on the right. The information panel showcases all of the other settings and parameters that you can set on a dialogue for the currently selected dialogue node. So dialogue node two. Oh, okay, we have this big text box here so we can do some more fine editing. Hide NPC, the sound file that's played, uh, faction changes and quest. So I'm gonna go over to the availability settings. Select this to after. Select dialogue. We are in the selecting dialogue for availability mode. Double click dialogue node two, and now we have set this to be after this dialogue is read. 
You can also set it directly from the ID and you can see it will automatically load the name if, it, if the editor has it loaded. If it doesn't have it loaded, it will say unindexed dialog. So let's go, it needs to be after 22, save, export. Go ahead and run that command. I don't want to tell you, here it is. So that's the absolute basics of creating dialogues and dialogue trees. There's a lot more that I want to showcase. So let me go ahead and get into that. If you are starting to create a dialogue and it's getting way out of hand, you can see this tree is not going to get in the way of this. Um, you can drag and select multiple nodes to move them at once, but you can also double click on a node and it will select every node in the branch from there on. And we can move this up. Another feature to help with organization and keeping things clean is if a dialog is too far away from a response node, the connection line is automatically hidden. You can change the distance of that here. So if I set that to the max 4,000, now you can see it'll last a lot longer. And that's just to avoid having this big blue line stretching across the entire dialog tree. You might have dialogues down here that go all the way back up here. That's just to help hide it and make things look neater. I'm gonna set this back to 1000. Over here, you can see I can jump to the connected node so I can still find it, or I can remotely disconnect it, but I don't want to disconnect it. But let's say that I do disconnect it and I have this unrelated dialogue here. I want to connect this response option to that dialogue. All I need to do is drag the blue line over to here and then boom, it automatically connects it. You can also type in the uh, ID right here, but it will just assume that this is a remote connection. It will just assume that this is a remote connection to a different category, so it's not going to uh, let you jump to the node, but you can disconnect it. And go ahead and drag it back there. Another feature that I forgot to go over is if you drag the dialogue node, it won't take its responses, but if you're holding shift, it will drag the responses along with it. You can invert this functionality in the editor settings so that dragging it will always drag the responses unless you're holding shift. There's one more node to go over, that is the color organizer. The color organizer is only for the editor. It is a giant square that we can change the color of and then change the title to be like uh, intro. This is just for you to organize your dialogue trees. Now we can say uh, all the dialogues in this part are, are part of the intro. And then we can add another one over here. Let's say this one's about a quest or something, make it green. This is purely for organization. Now, this is how to create dialogue trees, but if we go over to the villager dialogue, it'll ask us to choose a starting dialogue for the tree. We're gonna hit start and it will automatically import our dialogues and responses and try to arrange them in a tree. Now, the one weakness of the editor is that the tree is not very well organized. You will get lots of overlap and stuff. That's why I made these double click systems to help organization be a little bit easier. That's something that I really hope to fix, but I'm not smart enough to do. But anyway, we can see that we have our new, we have our imported dialogue here and we can edit it. And go ahead and control S and control E to export. And if we go into our dialogues, villager start, you can see it has our little edit right there. Another little feature is if we have a dialogue node selected, holding alt and clicking the arrow keys will allow us to navigate the dialogue tree. So alt right goes to this response option, then to the dialogue node, then to that response option. And we'll go back, right, down, and now we can navigate this tree. If there is a case where you have multiple response options connected to a dialogue. You may find that it is impossible to get back to this dialogue. You can see I can't make it go to that response option. Let's pretend that this one doesn't exist. Now there's no way for me to get here. If you hold shift, it will cycle through all the response options in the order that you're going. So alt shift left, 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 right, 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 right. It'll probably be easier to demonstrate if there was another response option. What I mean, left, 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 right, right, right. Hey, this is yellow slightly from the future. Uh, there's one more feature I wanted to showcase. If we have these response options, A, B, and C, 
and then go, hmm, I actually want C to be on top. Uh, start dragging response option, hold Alt, and then when you drag it over another one, it will switch them. So now C is response option one and A. You can also switch responses from dialogues. So I'm gonna switch A to C over here. And you can also do multiple at a time. Boom. All right. One more thing I need to show you, but I need to go into a different environment. Go ahead and save and close. I'm gonna open up the Daruma world. So here are all the dialogues for my adventure map Daruma. I'm gonna go ahead and open up just some random ones. Let's do Calypso. No, I wanna do one that I have not um, looked at yet. Let's go with uh, Lois. Mariah Reynolds. So we have this dialogue, I'm gonna open it in greetings. So here's our dialogue, Mariah Reynolds. She stares longingly in the distance. Oh, hell comrade, I don't remember what this dialogue's about. But what I wanted to show was opening up the information panel. Let's say I want reading this dialogue to affect our factions. Uh, you can set it through the ID here, but the editor will automatically load in the factions.dat file and give you all the names of the factions so you can easily select it here. We have all of our technical factions for Daruma, let's say the town Rahe. I want to add negative 100 points when you read this dialogue. Same thing for quest. I want it to start the main quest for Daruma, so I click select quest, the Denhyro in Gravel, and achieve the Denhyro in Gravel, which is dialogue or quest ID 8. So now this dialogue will start that quest and do this to the faction. In the mail category, you can set your items here. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, the item ID, uh, if you type in the item ID and the count, it will use that as the item for, slot, as the item in the item mail slot. Anything, if there's anything in the NBT data, it just ignores the item ID and the count and we'll just paste uh, NBT data here. So you might wanna use an external editor to create um, your item as NBT and paste it in here. Uh, this is mainly so that dialogues that are imported with mail don't lose their mail when they're exported out. Uh, I think it's much easier to just put the items in the item slot in the actual in-game editor. Other than that, yeah, I don't know if I have much more to go over. Uh, let's say that I've messed up this dialogue really badly. I don't like what I've been doing with it. If I have not exported it, I can re-import the dialogue and start over. Uh, let's say that I've moved a dialogue into this world, but it has some conflicting IDs. I can do re-index ID and it will find the highest ID of this environment and assign all the dialogues in this category a new ID um, from that highest ID. So now this is 3,264. There are a lot of dialogues in Daruma. Let me go ahead and showcase an actual example of uh, me using the color organizer. So here we have these color organizers, Amnesia. This is Philip Gerard. This is the guy who's sitting next to a tower in Alkali Deserts. He has Amnesia. So this dialogue's all about uh, when he has Amnesia and you're trying to figure out what happened. This one is when you have the quest to help him during his Amnesia. This one's when he's on top of the tower and so on and so forth, so things like that. So hope this looks useful to you. Please report any bugs or changes you have in mind, and yeah.